Now, generally speaking, I found that you can mow pretty tall grass if you just take it easy, set it on the high setting, go nice and slow, pass over it a few times. Well, before you jump in and say that there smoking pal is your my fault, I gotta say in my defense, I've been pulling mice. Mice have been putting straw and other things down into the around the motor. I pulled them out two other times, and then today also, and it was running kind of funny when I started her up but uh got everything out i could see yeah um so after this here happened totally took fire uh i decided it's time to get the rest of this job done the uh, cover crop i decided to put in a new cover crop area up here close to the house so i could uh, hope to see the deer come in nice and close but uh, <clears throat> I finished it off with a push mower and it did just fine using that there technique I was saying go slow pass over it several times just don't bite off more than you can chew so to speak so um, not quite sure what happened here it's gonna be a shame I'm gonna miss the girl but uh, let's go back in time a little bit I'll show you uh, what I saw when the uh, flames started. I don't know. This might be God's way of saying, here, mower, you need to let it go. It's too old. Maybe, pretty sure it was too small for the job. I'd smash the grass down first in most places for uh, but uh, I, it was running kind of funny and uh, I opened up the lid I saw some flames down low ran into the house by the time I got back it was about a quarter of this size in flames and uh, yeah it's a shame I filled her up with gas she burned that much hotter but I guess uh, yes I'm done with this this here mower Well, here we be, approximately two months out from the scene. I think you know what scene I mean. And I just wanted to give you a little update on the food plot, how it's doing. Got a good bit of diversity here. Uh, here you see this corn looking like stuff. This be sorghum, wildlife sorghum, sort of a shorter form of it. Well, I don't know if it was worth burning up my mower for this but ain't it pretty look at all that buckwheat right in there it's in blossom right now it's the tall flower and stuff here we have itsy bitsy mulberry plant coming up i threw some seeds out and lo and behold a few of them be coming up so about same about one month after the buckwheat was blooming we got this and this be even prettier at all them sunflowers. Well, hello, come on in. I'm just trying to make a, my first mosaic with this, this old popcorn. It was just lying around in the kitchen. It wouldn't pop anymore. Do you, you just call it corn if it's lost its pop? It's a great mystery, right? Well, not real happy with the results so far. Kind of boring. No. 
You think diversity of seeds would be good? Hmm. That might give me a variety of colors and sizes and shapes. That, that could be good. Let me see what I have in the kitchen. Oh. Oh my, lots of good stuff. Where, where's the... Happy? Happy? Did you, were, were you eating all the sunflower seeds again? Uh, well, uh, maybe a squirrel got into them. That's right, a, a squirrel. A squirrel? How to get into the house? Hey, well, I did find some seeds. Uh, look at all these. I mean, if I would plant all these, think of all of the, a lot of plants. It'd be like, how, how, count the beans. How many plants and how many beans would come off of this? I am ready to mosaic. I think what I'll draw is a big sunflower on this heavy half sheet of paper, kind of cardstock. And I want to, I've drawn the X with a ruler coming from the corners and that finds the center for you so that's good and next what i want to do take a compass and draw the biggest possible circle that i can make there it is the big circle and then we need a medium sized circle for the center this is going to be where the seeds go here toward the center and toward the outer area here will be the petals and seeds here. So next we want to cut this down into more little rows and these will be where the seeds go. They will be organized on here making them about the size I think my seeds will be. Now some rows are going to be smaller because I have grains of rice or oats, or barley, this kind of thing. So I'm going to keep doing those. So now what I want to do is draw some sunflower petals in here. It's always a good idea to look at a picture of sunflower if you're going to draw sunflower, right? And we just put the petals in here about like so maybe a few little lines here for realism and lots of times they have petals behind the petals sort of like this and then uh, let's imagine that I've done all of those come in with a permanent marker and just outline these to help them stand out so much better when we move to the watercolor which we're getting ready to do okay we come in here with watercolor and paint this in a nice dark purple behind the petals to make this show up very nice, right? Pretty intense for watercolor. And when I'm done with the purple, I think I come in here with some yellow for the petals. I think it's nice to start out oh, toward the edge with some intense, leave some of it uh, on shaded, then take a dry or a damp brush and kind of blend that a little bit and it keeps a little bit more realism with that this one behind will probably be a little more shadowed a little less white on it and do another one here yet okay blend this around with this and keep that brush clean drying it off and we have the start of that now what we want to do next is go in here and paint these bands uh, sort of natural colors that uh, I would think I would see in in the center of a uh, so I think I would see red here could be pretty and this is just going to give us a nice background color for when we glue the seeds on We'll see these colors coming through. Maybe I'll make this one red also, and this one red. And 
Maybe I go with uh, brown right here on this small row, right? And maybe brown in this small row, and maybe finish off with orange in these alternating rows. Now what you want to do is take the seeds that you have, a big range of colors is great, and sizes, and start to line them up and arrange them in the different bands to see what kind of patterns that you can come up with. Uh, here I've started to put corn in this fairly large pattern, and it's nice to pay attention to the direction. Here you see that I have, uh, these two are pointing toward each other, the backs of each other to this one, and these two are pointing toward each other. So always pointing toward each other, and then two pointing toward each other. And, you know, as opposed to, I could have put them all facing the same direction, which is fine too. It's another way to go with it, in terms of like that, but of course in, in your row. Um, so this row, I'm curving around like this, but to play with it a little bit, I'll play and show you my pattern. Oh, here is the pattern that I came up with. We have green split peas. The next row, we have little barley going lengthwise. Then we have the corn pointing in toward each other. And another row of split peas and then kidney beans. Of course, I could lay kidney beans this way if I wanted to, but I wanted them to be kind of diagonal here. And, um, Next, you're ready to glue. So I like to put down, get this glue working here. You put down a pretty generous portion of glue. And then I use a brush or a pencil to help push the different items into place. And I uh, had a little too much glue there when I got started, but uh, Pretty quickly this will dry in place and you just keep going, fill the center and uh, you'll end up with something that looks like this. That's my finished, my finished mosaic in here and it's kind of decorated with, uh, this would take a long, long time to do all this so we just do the center. Yeah, my finished project. Look how nice that turned out. It gives me another idea. I could put do a whole series of them, put the labels on here. This could be kidney bean. This one could be split pea. So like up here on the top, it could say split pea. Ah, oh, beautify the kitchen.